Hey, welcome to Select Arcane. It's that time of year where people are in a flurry trying to get everything done before the holiday season. The stores are absolutely packed with people, and Christmas music is playing on every single radio station. You know that we're really close to December 24th. I personally celebrate Christmas, and so I wanted this video to have a Christmassy vibe to it. Today we'll be doing something different and making a jump. This idea has been in my head for a while, but I need to put my idea on paper first. When I think of Christmas, I think of presents, the Christmas tree, the general get-together of family and friends, ugly Christmas sweaters, etc, etc, etc. I mean, there's also the religious aspect of it, but it's not something that my family focuses on during Christmas. But where do I even start? I decided to go with a classic tree motif and maybe a fireplace on the other side. I mean, think about it. The fireplace, the stockings hanging over it with little trinkets inside and presents underneath as filler. It sounds like a decent start. Eh, something's bothering me about the fireplace. Imagine a horse coming into this jump and seeing this giant block on one side. What would I even put on the entering side? I decided to do trees on both sides instead keeping the present filler at the bottom and changing up the poles to make, give it more Christmas. When making a jump or other scaled down prop for a horse or rider, it's important to realize that it's just the miniature version of the real life thing. So if you have a jump, you need to make sure it's safe on both sides. So if a horse comes into it, they don't hurt themselves if they hit it. So when miniaturizing your prop, you're also miniaturizing the safety. For the trees, I found some perfectly sized cutouts on Amazon. They're made of wood and just so happen to be the exact size I need. They arrived in a timely fashion and I got to work. Using two of the trees, I marked down the middle and cut them in half using a handheld Dremel. Unfortunately, the Dremel did not do a very clean job so I had to end up snapping them halfway through the process. As you can see, they didn't come out as cleanly as I hoped. But using the sanding belt on the Dremel and some sandpaper, I finally got them to be as clean as I needed them to be. I say that, but my boyfriend did not like my quality control standards and ended up using a, a Japanese pull style saw to clean up the edges. While he did that, I turned my attention over to making Christmas cards. Turning my attention over to the standards, I measured 6 inches and cut twice to make matching standards. Using the Dremel, I just filed the tops off of the standards to buff out the edges, just like real jumps. I measured the standards and lined up where 10 tiny holes needed to be so that the jump cup pins could fit inside. Next they were hit 10 times each with the drill press. Next I used the Japanese pull saw to cut two poles. These are 1 cm in diameter wooden dowels, and they are 8 inches long. Just as a note, the standards are actually the square versions. After sawing, I used some heavier grit sandpaper to sand off any rough edges. And then use my tiny desk vacuum to clean up the mess. With two sets of tree wings, two standards, and two poles, there's only one thing left. The stands that actually hold the jump up. There's a few options. I have a lot of jumps in my possession that have different types of stands. Here we have my Halloween bat jump that's more of a wing standard. I have another type of wing standard. And then I have this kind of pinwheel sort of foot. None are really what I'm looking for because in my design I actually kind of want a more tree stand look. Which means that we have to go to a more old fashioned type of jump stand. Make no mistake, I used to own one of these types of jumps. I designed it, but Eric built it. Two tree stands complete. The part on the outside actually supports the jump because the weight of the tree pushes the jump to the side. This just catches it. No footage of it, but trust me, it was annoying. And notice that there's paper on the bottom to solidify the base. Now officially with everything cut out, it's time for assembly. 
I mean, there's one more thing, but we'll get to that. The trees get glued together with Elmer's wood glue. This glue not only sticks the wood together, but also acts as a filler because it actually has sawdust in it. The trees get glued together in a V shape and then clamped. This is because when they're dry, they're going to be sanded down to have a nice flat edge and then glued to the standard. That makes it more secure. While everything's drying, I move my attention over to the present filler. At Home Depot, they actually had the right size of wood, which is crazy. So I grabbed this brick of poplar wood. I cut it at seven inches with the Japanese pull saw and created five notches in the wood. These notches go all the way around, by the way. It leaves the brick intact and whole, so there's no individual pieces to it, but it just kind of gives the illusion of individual presence. After sawing, they were sanded with my sandpaper, and then I set to work using Golden Brand Gesso to give it a primed finish and help the paint adhere later on. I'm just using simple Golden Brand acrylic paint to do the paint job. I'm going for a gift wrap motif, so, you know, just kind of traditional wrapping paper style, not the modern pop culture type of paper. Classic Christmas, you know? Once I finished the present filler, I moved back to the trees. One of the trees was actually a little bit crooked, so I had to get Eric to break the tree and reset it. Bit of a pain, but I reclamped it, redid it, and long story short, it succeeded and we were able to sand off the final corner and glue it to the standard. Oh my gosh, they look so cool. Next step, I gessoed them in white and took them out to spray paint. Here I'm using Tester's spray enamel in kind of a sparkly green. Sorry for the poor footage, my spraying chair kind of collapsed, so I'm down to one chair. Hopefully a new workbench is waiting for me under the tree. While the enamel dries on the trees, I turn my attention back inside, where it's nice and warm. I pull out my Aves Epoxy Sculpt. The last time I used this for a YouTube video, it was for the Powerpuff Ponies unboxing video. I highly recommend that you check out that because I do more sculpting there. I take a pinch of each 50-50 because there's two parts as you see, parts A and B. I work the epoxy with my fingers using gloves. You can have a serious allergic reaction sometimes if you use your bare hands, so I highly recommend that you use gloves for this. I make sure all the epoxy is mixed together. I knead, I roll, I pinch, anything to make sure that it's well mixed. I roll tiny circles and use an X-Acto knife to attempt to cut them in half, which proves a little bit more challenging than what I intended. After some reworking, I get a shape that's, you know, resembling somewhat of a Christmas bobble. I'll be sanding them and, you know, filing them down a bit later. It takes two hours for the epoxy to cure fully before I can even attempt to start sanding. Back to the standards. Oh dear. This is the Guinevere pony trailer all over again. For some reason, these spray enamels never seem to want to work for me, and I don't know if it's because it's cold outside or what, but they dripped, they took two hours to dry, and still were tacky. So let's fix this. I'm going over with just plain old green acrylic paint to even out the color and uh, we'll hide the mistakes with <laughs> Christmas baubles, I guess. And speaking of those baubles, they're already cured and ready to be sanded and painted. So I just very carefully sand them on some heavy grit sandpaper to take off the rough edges and to make sure that they're flat on one side. Otherwise, it will, they will be impossible to stick onto those standards. And then I take a mixture of acrylic paint water, and some beautiful Pearlex powders in the base color. Here I'm using blue, green, red, and silver to kind of give it the traditional Christmas vibe. I'm really hoping that this matches the present filler. I'm not using any gold because I'm using a lot of gold in the filler, and I just want to kind of bring out um, all the other colors. Are the green baubles too much? Maybe. Maybe they are. But we're going to go with it anyways. Normally I would use Elmer's all-purpose glue all, but honestly I couldn't find it in my supply box, so here I'm using tacky glue, which is actually a type of fabric glue, but it honestly works really well as a normal craft glue as well. It dries clear, it dries quickly, so no complaints here. 
Once the baubles are fully dry, which takes no time at all, I stick them to the tree, trying to stagger them and arrange the colors appropriately. Some of the baubles were a little stubborn, so I had to clamp them down. <laughs> oh my gosh, I really hope that these stay. Whew. Okay, we're in the home stretch. One of my favorite stores is the Little Dollhouse Company in Toronto. There you can find anything from tiny bricks to tiny houses to tiny windows. You name it. Anything for a dollhouse you can find at the Little Dollhouse Company. I found this really, really neat coiled wreath. Coiled... Uh, I don't know what to call it. <laughs> wreath material. Let's just call it that. And it, it's kind of used to drape your banister at Christmas in your little dollhouse. But here I'm using it to fill in the brush of one of the poles. Lots of local artists contribute to the little dollhouse company by making tiny props and selling them at the store. And I found this really neat already made Christmas wreath material. It's um, actually the same type of wrapping material I'm using here, but it's decorated with baubles, tinsel, glitter, you know, you name it. It's perfect for the holidays. But I didn't foresee it not being able to wrap around the pole. Oh man. Maybe next year I'll use it for something else, but for now I'll just use the plain brush. Maybe it's for the best because maybe it'll be too busy with baubles and such. I'm going to substitute in ribbons instead. If you were wondering what the purpose of the second pole was, I'm using these tiny 1 12th scale Christmas lights. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about these. I also got these from the Little Dollhouse Company and unraveling them, they are just like regular Christmas lights because they tangle instantly. It took me a while to wrap the pole. And also after scouring the entire studio, and going through the kitchen and everything, I don't have any batteries, so I'll have to just get some batteries for the photo shoot. Using Liquitex high gloss varnish, I seal in the trees and the present filler. This dries extra shiny, which is fine because I actually do want this to have a plasticky feel to it. And last but not least, I think is the most tedious part of it, I wrap the present filler using real authentic ribbons. I try gluing them down onto the presents and creating tiny hand knotted bows, which I completely envy little tack makers and prop makers because my fingers just do not tie bows and I temporarily forgot how to tie. Oh my gosh. Anyways, I didn't film most of it because it was just painful to do and took 45 minutes. So skipping forward, we are done quick assembly to show how it is and cue the photo shoot. This project was time consuming, but actually didn't take that long. Probably the equivalent of six hours. The stars at the top of the standards represent the entry points like little flags red for right. I'm borrowing some 3D printed jump cups from some of my other jumps and the battery pack is able to fit nicely behind one of the trees. This is actually the first jump I've ever made and I'd like to thank Eric for helping me through the whole process and uh, helping me with the <clears throat> power tools. I'd like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Hanukkah, whatever you are celebrating this holiday season. This will be the last video of 2021, and I hope to see you all in the new year. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next year. Thank you so much. Bye.